Have you seen Lauren Ron? 14-year-old Lauren Ron was described as a smart and independent, typical teenager. She was a straight-A student at her junior high, and she loved to sing and dance. She also had dreams of becoming an actress, and her family said that she always wanted to be in the movies. On April 26, 1980, Lauren was excited to start her spring break. Her mom, Judy, had gone out of town for the day, so the teenager had the entire Manchester, New Hampshire apartment to herself. She decided to invite a couple of friends over for drinks, and it's believed they got alcohol from a local convenience store that was known for not IDing its teenage patrons. According to authorities, Lauren and her friends hung out most of the day but by 11 p.m., they were all back at her apartment drinking. Around 12.30 in the morning, her girlfriend went to bed, leaving her and her male friend on the couch watching TV in the living room. Around this time, the two of them heard voices outside of the apartment and thought that it may be Lauren's mom getting home. Worried that her mom might be upset that she had a boy over at such a late hour, she decided to sneak him out of the back door. When questioned about what happened that night, the boy said he remembered hearing Lauren lock the deadbolt behind him as he left. A neighbor would also later tell Lauren's mom that he also heard voices and footsteps of somebody leaving around that same time. He added that he also heard the voice approaching their apartment and then silence. Only about an hour later, her mom returned home with her boyfriend and she immediately noticed a few things seemed very off. First, as the couple was heading up the stairs, they noticed that the light bulbs in each of the floor's hallways were off. At first, they thought maybe it was a burnt fuse, but later would learn that each one of them had been purposely unscrewed. Next, when they got to their front door, it was unlocked. They had always kept the door locked, but maybe it had been Lauren that had just forgotten to lock it. Either way, this was very unsettling, especially with the lights being out. They rushed into the apartment, and nothing seemed to be out of the ordinary at first. She looked into Lauren's room and saw who she assumed was Lauren, but it was actually her friend that had fallen asleep. But she hadn't figured that out just yet. It was only when her boyfriend asked why the back door was open that she really knew something was wrong. She went to go wake up Lauren and quickly realized that it was not her daughter. She woke up the sleeping girl and asked where Lauren was, but the girl was still a little drunk and said that she was sleeping on the couch. Worry quickly turned into panic because she had just been in the living room and Lauren was not there. Continuing to panic, she decided to call everyone that she knew, asking if they had seen Lauren. But unfortunately, no one had seen or heard from her. They then decided to head out into the neighborhood and start searching for her themselves. It was nearly four o'clock in the morning when she saw a police cruiser and flagged him down. In a complete panic, she explained that her daughter was missing. When police began investigating, their initial theory was that Lauren had ran away. There was no sign of a struggle or forced entry into the apartment, and because Lauren was 14, it wouldn't be completely crazy for her to just try to leave. Her mom said that they had a small disagreement that day before she had left, but that Lauren would have never ran away over something like that. She said, we never fought. We were the best of friends. Police would later find out that Lauren had on more than one occasion talked about running away. But talking about it and actually doing it are two different things. And even her closest friends said that she hadn't mentioned any plans of leaving and that she seemed to be pretty happy. Also, she hadn't taken anything with her. No money, clothing, or possessions of any kind, other than the outfit she was last seen wearing. Sadly, in the 1980s, 
organizations like the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children had not yet been founded, and attitudes about children, especially teenagers, disappearing were much different. Police made some attempt to investigate, but a full-scale search was not done. A week after Lauren's disappearance, police spoke to a bus station employee that said he remembered selling a ticket to a girl that matched her description. They went a step further and spoke with the actual bus driver, and he ID'd Lauren by a picture he was shown, and said that he had dropped her off in Park Square in Boston. This all seemed to support the runaway theory, but if she had run away for a small fight, why hadn't she come back yet? or even tried to reach out at all. It didn't take long for police to modify their theory. They started to work out that Lauren had left willingly, but not actually ran away. Instead, they believed that she had intended to come back, not long after leaving, but that something might have happened. A few weeks had gone by, and the file on Lauren's case had already started to get pretty thick. In fact, police spoke to the bus driver again this time showing him a recent photo of Lauren, and after seeing the new photo, he said that he wasn't sure if it was actually Lauren that he had dropped off. Deputy Chief Ken Murby, a captain in charge of the Manchester Police's Juvenile Division at the time, would later call it the saddest part of my 33 years in police work. Somehow he was never convinced that this was just a teenager running away. For years he worked on Lauren's case. According to those who knew him, at one point he was so invested that him and his wife would spend their off-duty hours driving around looking for Lauren. But no leads were ever discovered. As the years went by, Lauren's mom started seeking the help of the FBI. She spoke to an agent and they told her that without evidence of a kidnapping, they couldn't get involved. She was also referred to two private investigators, both ex-FBI agents, and she hired both of them. But after three or four months, they both had come up with nothing. However, she did learn through the FBI that there was an organization known to be in that area that was kidnapping children and selling them out of the country. In fact, in the spring and early summer of 1980, two other young women disappeared in the area where Lauren lived. 15-year-old Rachel Garden and 25-year-old Denise Danault both went missing and some believe that there may be a link between these cases and Lauren's. Sadly to this day, Lauren remains a missing person. It's been over four decades since she vanished and she would no longer be the junior high girl that her family remembered. In fact, this year would have been her 55th birthday, but sadly it was another birthday that she didn't celebrate with her friends and family. So where is Lauren Ron? Was it simply a 14-year-old girl that ran away and started a new life? Or was there something else that happened? Let me know in the comments.